the producing bottom of pressure is the pressure in the well bore at the formation while the well is being produced at normal conditions. And we want that normal conditions all the time. We want the pressure down there to be real low compared to what's out in the reservoir. The static bottom hole pressure is the pressure in the well bore at the formation in the same well down the same place when the well has been shut in for a sufficient length of time for the well to stabilize so that the fluid level and the casing pressure do not change, indicating that the pressure at the bottom of the well is the same as it is way out 200 yards from the bottom of the well out in the reservoir. And that's the pressure we're trying to get. What is the push pressure? And it's pushed so much and so hard that it's filled the well to whatever it's going to and it doesn't change anymore. So we shoot the fluid level and then we calculate what the pressure is at the bottom of the well. Way out in the reservoir we have a thousand pounds and as you get closer to the producing well the pressure drops. And here it's dropped down to about half of what you had out in the reservoir. So we're kind of doing a halfway job of producing it. We're getting somewhere between 50 and 70 percent of what's available depending on what technique you use to analyze it. But if it were my well and I didn't have any problem with getting rid of the water, I'd want the pressure over here to be less than 10 percent of what's over there. So I'd like to know the pressure out in the reservoir, it's 1,000 pounds, and when I'm pumping the well, I want the pressure over here to be less than 100 pounds. That's my goal there at the well. Well, along with a bunch of others trying to optimize all the other stuff, but I mean your main goal, this is your main goal, is to get fluids out of the reservoir. When I start out in engineering, we use what's the PI, called the PI of a well. And in wells that don't make much gas, you can use this relationship. But it says that every time you drop, drop the pressure down in the well bore, like one PSI, you may get another barrel of liquid. So you got one barrel of liquid per PSI pressure drop. And that's what we used. One time I designed, when I worked for a major, uh, I designed and specified an ESP and I over designed it and bought one a little bit too big. <clears throat> when you're producing liquids out of a well, gas comes out of solution often or gas may be flowing and as it goes through the reservoir it occupies space. So when you drop the pressure a little bit more, the not as much fluid would come in as it used to come in when there was last less gas down there. So you have a curve like this called the Vogel curve and it's pretty well accepted today as being a good general rule as to how to predict how much fluid will come into a well. On the straight line, if you're producing it and drop the pressure down to here and you're getting that much fluid, then you can you estimate that it'll give up this much total fluid if you drop the pressure on down to zero. But with a Vogel curve, it, it shows that when you drop it down some, it's pretty much a straight line, but then when you drop it some more, you don't help it as much. And that, that's the behavior of most oils. The PI index refers to the straight line method, and it assumes the productivity of the well to be constant. The units in the United States are PSI, barrels per day per PSI, or the rate divided by the pressure drop. And it's normally just used now with wells that don't make any free gas. If it makes all water, you know, they'll use that. An example of this in the calculation is here's the reservoir pressure of a thousand pounds. And then we started, they started producing the well at 250 barrels a day, and the pressure dropped down to 500 PSI. Well, let's calculate it. The productivity is equal to the flow rate over the drawdown. If the flow rate's 250, and we drop the pressure from 1,000 to 500, 
then our pressure drop is 500 PSI and our PI is 250 divided by 500 or 0.5 barrels per day per PSI. And so if you go ahead and extend this straight line relationship on the well, it just makes liquid with no gas, then you could calculate what the maximum potential of the well is. And this is what you'd design, like if you're buying a big pump, this is what you'd design for. And the PI times the static bottom over pressure is its maximum rate, 0.5 times 1,000, or this well will give up about 500 barrels a day. Vogel came along several years ago and found that when gas is made with the liquid that it doesn't follow that line. And most pe a lot of people use it, and it's a good general uh, technique to estimate the maximum production available from a well. And this is his curve. This is the producing bottom hole pressure divided by the static bottom hole pressure. And this is the producing rate as the percentage of the maximum rate. And so if, you're, if your producing bottom hole pressure is the same as your static pressure like we talked about, then you don't have any flow rate coming into the well. And they're both the same. They're equal to each other. Then when you get make your producing bottom hole pressure zero, you withdraw everything, gas, liquid, everything, as soon as it comes in, then you have your maximum flow rate. And just looking at a couple of examples here, at 90% drawdown on a well that has a reservoir pressure of 2,500 PSI, the pressure is 250 PSI, and you're getting some 97% of what's available. Well, how does this apply to us? Well, let's say we're working on a water, on a CO2 project, and our reservoir pressure is about 2,500 pounds. This says that at the bottom of that well, I can have 250 pounds, it doesn't hurt me much. 250 pounds is 500,000 feet of fluid. And if it's got some bub gas bubbling up through it, I could have 1,500 feet of fluid in this well with gas bubbling up through it, and I'm still getting 97% of what's available. And you might call up the ESP people or Lufkin and chew them out. You said this pump would produce so much fluid. Well, it is doing everything, you know, you get 97% of what's available. So sometimes, shooting the fluid level with the strip chart, you know, is a little bit trickier than if you could figure out exactly what the bottom hole pressure is. It takes experience if you don't have the, this other information. Let's say that we have a well with 250 pounds. We got a lot of these around. Wichita Falls, they don't even have that much pressure on them anymore. And